Get to our top story, President Trump facing criticism from Democrats and from several Republicans this morning after questioning the number of deaths attributed to Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico last year. In a pair of tweets yesterday morning, the president wrote, 3,000 people did not die in the two hurricanes that hit Puerto Rico. When I left the island after the storm had hit, they had anywhere from 6 to 18 deaths. The president argued the report, which put the death toll at nearly 3,000, was done by the Democrats in order to make him look as bad as possible, he says. Florida Governor Rick Scott, who's been endorsed by Trump in his bid for the Senate, tweeted yesterday, I disagree with POTUS. An independent study said thousands were lost, and Governor Rosseo agreed. I've been to Puerto Rico seven times and saw devastation firsthand. The loss of any life is tragic. The extent of lives lost as a result of Maria is heart-wrenching. I will continue to help Puerto Rico. By, by the way, Willie, really, oh. obviously a lot of huge races in Florida, as Tim Russert would have said this year. Florida. You look at the governor's race and you look at the Senate race, it is Florida, Florida, Florida. Absolutely. But Puerto Rico is a huge issue in the state of Florida, whether you're a Republican, or whether you're a Democrat, especially in Central Florida, Willie. And when you see Rick Scott, who's been one of the president's most loyal supporters, uh, coming out, when you see Paul Ryan coming out, yeah. when, you, when, you, when you see, of course, the governor of, of Puerto Rico, who has really tried his best to be as positive toward the president through this whole process, even while the president was having a battle with other officials down there, then you know that it's causing Republicans in the state of Florida a lot of discomfort. Yeah, no question about it. A lot of the Puerto Ricans forced to flee the hurricane have ended up in Florida, of course. So that is a central issue with that governor's race coming up. Well, and, and they're Americans. And, and they're Americans. And they're going to vote. That's exactly right. Yeah. Top Republicans yesterday on Capitol Hill offering mixed reaction to the president's tweets yesterday. The casualties don't make a person look bad. That's not... Uh, so I have no reason to dispute these numbers. I was in Puerto Rico after the hurricane. It was devastated. This was a horrible storm. I have no reason to dispute those numbers. Um, those are just the facts of, of what happens when a horrible hurricane hits an isolated place like an island. It was a tragedy. There's no question about it. And it was a very difficult problem for all of us here in the country. And we should do everything we can to help people in those kind of circumstances. I would hope he's not saying that Democrats are to blame for the death toll, but there has been a it's like a rush to try to make a Katrina moment uh, for the president to say that was really toxic for President Bush, that how he handled the storm. And so let's see if we can do that to President Trump as well. well I really don't know the number of deaths, but it was certainly more than 16, whatever the initial reports were. There's a big difference between 16 and 3,000. I don't know who picked the number 3,000. I don't know how they arrived at the information. I'd like to know more. The White House press office put out a statement following the president's tweet. It reads in part, as the president said, every death from Hurricane Maria is a horror. President Trump was responding to the liberal media and the San Juan mayor, who sadly have tried to exploit the devastation by pushing out a constant stream of misinformation and false accusations. But, but Willie, wow. this, this was a study, actually. George Washington G University. A GW study that actually Rick Scott and other Florida officials agree with. That right. Puerto, that it, Rick Scott said thousands of deaths from the storm. Yeah, and that's that was an independent study conducted by George Washington University, and unclear exactly, at least, why the president wants to dredge up which was a story that was horrible for the people of Puerto Rico, quite obviously, and not a good one for the president himself either. Well, it goes back to the central theme of this presidency. It is all about Donald Trump. No matter how many people have died, no matter how many people and families have been affected by a horrific tragedy, he brings it back to how it makes him feel, mm. and that's very sad. It's a very sad moment for our country. You know, Mike, um, Republicans uh, have an uphill battle for this fall. Uh, I think. You, you, yes, <laughs> the, the president's approval numbers are back down into the 30s. We've now got a double digit uh, congressional ballot test, intensities up there. And every day, Republicans on Capitol Hill, at least the ones that I'm talking to, other people that are helping in campaigns, are just saying, we just wish he would stay out of the way. Like, those Florida races are tough. You get the president tweeting something like this in the morning because he's upset. I know people say his tweets don't matter. I've stopped reading most of them. But if you're a Republican trying to get elected, especially in the state of Florida, the president just puts you behind the eight ball for the entire news cycle. Well, let's say you're a Republican running in the state of Mississippi. <clears throat> You've got a pretty good economy. Um, unemployment is down. 
the future looks even more brighter than today does. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the President of the United States proves once again that he's a very small man. Yeah. And a lot of people, Republican, Democrat, Independent, I don't care, you eventually you get tired of being tired of the tweets. You get tired of being tired of his sense of victimization. That it is, as Elise said, it's always all about him. Well, and I also think what we learned in the conversation we had yesterday with a wonderful group of people here in Oxford, and uh, a lot, a lot, it's a lot of Trump supporters. Yes, but, and you. By got the way, it. Pat. Pat. She said, "Bless your heart." And wait. <laughs> That's not a compliment. Oh, you got to bless your heart. I got a wink oh. and a bless your oh. heart. She got a oh. wink. Really, the wink was just oh. one of those, like Dad, kiss That's the the, it wasn't even like a. It was one of those you little. Just barely, things. The wink is the knife twisted <gasps> after it's been. Exactly. Fills down my spine. I uh, loved Pat. I said, actually. Mika, Mika, you're a Yankee. That's not a compliment. No, but you know, you get a real sense that the center of this presidency is what maybe what you said, but also on the truth being so devalued that everything is in question. Um, former Vice President Joe Biden also weighed in on the president's claim of the death toll in Puerto Rico as a result of hurricanes during a speech in Washington that was on the topic of labor and the economy. Biden, who was reportedly mulling a run for the presidency in 2020, mocked Trump for his comments. My dad had an expression for real. He used to say, Joey, and he'd say it to all his, my siblings, don't compare me to the almighty, compare me to the alternative. <laughs> I, I guess that's the only reason I'm looking okay these days, the alternative, but, uh, and by the way, there are no problems in America. Uh, everybody's doing well. Uh, things are fair and decent, and no one died in Puerto Rico. Yeah. So, so Eddie, um, again, we, we're talking about Puerto Rico this morning. It mattered. Obviously, it's going to be mattering in the state of Florida. Right now, though, there's a hurricane that's crashing on shore in North Carolina. That's what a lot of people are concerned about. And we think back to past hurricanes, right. the failure of George H.W. Bush with Andrew in South Florida. It cost him dearly. Uh, and of course, we all know around here about Katrina and, and what that cost George W. Bush. Um, and I will say, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure where Puerto Rico fits in there, but you do have several studies where thousands of people have died. Even Republicans are saying thousands of people have died. Just seems to me somebody could get to the president and say, if, listen, if, if anything, just do no harm. Right. Let right. these Republicans <laughs> run their races without you making it harder for them every day. We're in the fight for our life, Mr. President. Right. And if they lose, Nancy Pelosi is going to have the power of the subpoena. Let's go golf. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, you would think that. But, you know, I, I tend to hold a view that Donald Trump struggles to be decent. That's about as generous as I can say it. And in this moment, uh, to lack empathy, to think about a disaster that's bearing down on, on, on the Carolinas and, and to not think about that and instead think about whether or not you're to blame mm -hmm. for the disaster that happened mm -hmm. in, in Puerto Rico uh, suggests a kind of narcissism that blunts his capacity to think about the suffering of others. But then there's this other part of it, Joe, that's really interesting, at least to me. There's all of this chaos from, from the Woodward book to the anonymous op-ed. Right. And there's this view that the White House is chaotic. And when you read these, when you read the book and you read the stuff, you think that the administration is just simply dysfunctional. And then you combine that dysfunction with the impending disaster, then you worry whether or not they're going to be prepared to deal with all right. the death yeah. and the destruction. And so he's talking about who's the 16, 18. We know 3,000, close to 3,000 people died. I'm worried, as General Honore and others, whether or not they're going to be prepared to deal with this disaster. Are they going to prepare, for, they going to be for, prepared? For, for what's in for front Florence. of them? And you know, what this is a lot like, Mika, is uh, like, for instance, the entire question over Russia and collusion. I think actually the president has finally cracked the code after a year and a half because he could never, if you ever talked about Russian interference in the election, he would say no collusion and there was no such thing. Now, and, and most of his top aides were terribly frustrated and said, you know, two things can be true at the same time. You could have legitimately won the presidency, 
But and Russia could have tried to interfere, interfere in the election, right? And he's never been able to figure out. Same thing with Puerto Rico. You can't have 2,000 or 3,000 deaths without him taking it as some personal failure on his front. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. But he, it does seem, at least on the Russia front, now he's finally starting to talk about punishing countries that actually are interfering in American democracy. Well, there is a lot more ahead this morning. New developments on former campaign chair Paul Manafort. Is he angling for a pardon? Plus, Democrats launch a last-ditch effort to stall the nomination of the president's Supreme Court pick, Brett Kavanaugh. And, of course, we will continue to follow Hurricane Florence lashing the Carolina coast. The National Weather Service says landfall is imminent. We're going to get the latest track. Go live to our reporters on the ground. You're watching a special edition of Morning Joe live in Oxford, Mississippi. We'll be right back.